All right, thank you everyone for submitting your questions for this Q&A video. Thank you. Hopefully I can have some fun. You guys can have some fun. And worst case scenario, for those of you that had your question selected, you at least get your question answered. Depends on who you are. Right, Mountie? Hmm? Yeah. Go look at that curse I put on you. Three daughters. Straight up your ass. That's where it goes. I don't know. You're probably, you're Canadian. You're one of those mother Canuckers. You're probably into the wife pegging your ass. Anyways, I'm not here to judge. Let's move on and get on with the Q&A. M.I.M. Arsenal is going to kick us off by asking, thoughts on the ROH New Japan show at MSG going ahead? Score one for the little guy. How about that? Crazy and funny how the world can work sometimes. And WWE's little terse statement about it. <laughs> Stick that up your ass. I still will plan on, assuming it's on some form of pay-per-view, to support what has happened here. I will, WrestleMania weekend next year, watch. Unless I decide to go to WrestleMania, if I actually have the ability to go to WrestleMania, then I will go in person. And if that happens, the Schleg Daddy's crashing NYC, bitches! You better strap in. Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Leonardo Batman asks, Do you think Dave Melter enjoys movies less that aren't Japanese? Probably. <laughs> He's a big fan of the Godzilla series. He loves Godzilla. I do wonder if he <laughs> grades movies similarly. Not Japanese, Japan-based product. So clearly is a discrepancy in the difference in the scoring. And no matter how much he pathetically tries to pretend there isn't, he just makes himself look like an even bigger chill for New Japan when he starts opening his tweet hole. Costello asks, If Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega happens in New Japan, how does Dave Meltzer rate it? If Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega happens in New Japan, number one, the Young Bucks better watch out because Meltzer's coming for their buttholes. He won't be able to contain himself. He'll be on a ravenous raping spree, the likes of which that'll even make Ben Roethlisberger proud. I, I, could there even possibly be, like, we can't even just do, like, Milky Way Galaxy rating for that one. That's like intergalactic universal grading scale on a whole entirely different level. I mean, fuck Omega Okada. The hell do you think he's going to do if Daniel Bryan and Kenny Omega ever happen, especially putting on the intergalactic bonus of it happening in New Japan, especially if it happened at a Wrestle Kingdom show. Oh my God, Meltzer might die. He might die. And if you're Dave... You know what? You've had almost 60 years. You've been able to con people into buying your newsletter for years. You get six figures a year. It's a hell of a way for him to go. Like, that would truly be his grace line. Anyways, Lil D DJ Boy asks, is Triple H one of the most overrated talents of all time? It depends on your perspective. If you believe God is overrated, then yes, he's overrated. You Freaking heretic, you freaking blasphemer, sinner, devil worshiper, Satan's incarnate, if you believe that. Let's look at Triple H's career. Every year he gets a seven-figure payout for working WrestleMania against a featured young guy. Okay, He was able to get three WrestleMania matches out of The Undertaker. He helped carry a match at WrestleMania, a triple threat, that involved him, Shawn Michaels, and somebody who doesn't exist. He married the boss's daughter. He's in line to, in part, inherit the company whenever Vince finally kicks the bucket. That doesn't sound overrated to me. It sounds like somebody we should praise. Oh, God. On everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. I'm just saying. Michael Corvin asked, If Draz never was paralyzed, how would his WWE career have went? He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! I still think about that every once in a while, just at random Vince beyond the mat. Here's draws, here's puke. 
He's gonna, he's gonna puke. And then, of course, Draws doesn't deliver. Um, probably some type of mid-card guy that lasts a couple of years. I don't know what the long-term play was for him. But I thought he was an adequate, okay talent. You know, not somebody you're going to build your company around, not somebody you're going to invest massive amounts of money into, but somebody that you have there that you might have help establish that next generation post-attitude era, perhaps. WNC Podcast asks, if RVD and Muhammad Hassan's situations had been different, how would their WWE runs have went? Uh, for RVD, I don't know that it would have went too much differently. It just might have delayed the inevitable with him because he probably would have gotten tired of dealing with the company's bullshit eventually. And Muhammad Hassan... Yeah, talk about a guy that got screwed over royally. Um, I still don't know what the end game would have been for the company. I don't know that his run would have been that long because once you went down that path, there really was nowhere else to go. And eventually it wouldn't have gotten the same heat. It wouldn't have gotten the same level of interest. So I don't know, honestly, that it would have been that much different. It just might have taken a little bit longer for things to play out the way they ultimately did. Ali third asked, one person you could choose from the Raw roster to dethrone Brock Lesnar. At this particular point in time, I will go with Bobby Lashley. Charles Mitchell. I find it hard to invest in NXT guys when I know Vince and or Kevin Dunn will screw them up. Your thoughts? I think that's a totally valid, legitimate perspective. It's really hard to sit there and separate them between NXT and the main roster, but you ultimately must. Because you know what they did at NXT, the type of audience you were clearly, solely, exclusively targeting in NXT is not anywhere near the entirety of the audience that you were targe targeting on a Raw or SmackDown. It's just not. It's just not. And for those people delusional enough to think that's the case, if that was the case, NXT would go live on the road all the time in the same types of venues and everything else that Raw and SmackDown do. And they don't. And there's a reason for that. Um... I think it is hard to invest in guys, and you hear it from the, and see it from a lot of people on social media and in different people's YouTube stuff, uh, talking about, yeah, this is great, until they get to the main roster and they screw them up. So yeah, it is really hard to invest in some of these guys because you really don't know once they get there whether or not the company's actually gonna give a crap and invest in them or not. Which seems crazy to me. If you had taken the time to put them through your developmental and you felt they were good enough and ready enough to get a main roster spot, you would think you would want to try and seize upon that and try to do something with them initially. Otherwise, what the fuck do you have the developmental territory for? Makes no sense to me. Imputations ask, should Bray Wyatt start doing restaurant ads to pay his child support? He keeps buying all them fucking mini ponies for JoJo's gold digging ass. He's going to end up having to deliver Chinese in order to help pay his child support. Stop trying to fake accidents, Bray, in order to get out of it because I promise you, you can't. They're going to come for you. They're going to garnish your Social Security and Medicaid if that's what they need to do. Chaos Dish it asks, could you name one thing you disagreed with each OTRS crew member on? Um, let's see here. For Mr. Rout, he thought Christian sucked. I never thought Christian sucked. Uh, for Tasteless Tony T, he thought Bret Hart was the greatest thing ever. Clearly, I disagreed with him because I was right. Uh, he also thought Dolph Ziggler was a main event talent. And he fucking was it. And Tony, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Marvelous Mark. Uh, he's a Braves fan. Fuck the Braves. Metal D. Uh, I don't know. Good question. It was even like for the Marvelous one. I had to go outside of wrestling to find something. Uh, for Metal D, mm, he's a Mets fan, so fuck them. There we go. There we go. Um, and Brad was, uh, B-Rad was a Auburn fan, is an Auburn fan. So he's like, War Damn Eagle. How the hell do you War Damn Eagle when your school mascot is a tiger? Just... Anyways, that's it. There you go. Hope that made you happy. Eric Dennis, in the 2010s, who was the most undeserving world champion in WWE? I say ADR. Uh, may I introduce to you Jack Swagger? End of discussion. Gaming Live Podcast. 
Is it sad that WCW in 2001 couldn't get a TV contract, but WWE can get a major deal on Fox with their current state? Yes. Yes, it is. Very sad. Of Love and Hate asks, did Josh Barnett overreact towards Jay White, or was he justified? It was a work. Let me emphasize again. It was work. And even works, potentially, could go slightly skew or stray. But it was a work. The King. Is wrestling the worst when it comes to taking criticism and shitting on the fan base? Um, yeah, pretty bad. Really bad. Like, in the regular real world, you, you're taught that you have to learn to take criticism. You learn things like the customer's always right, even if they're wrong, even if you disagree with them. But you don't go out of your way to piss off the customer, you would hope. Usually the ones that go out of their way to piss off the customers are the idiotic, uh, disconnected executives and the board of directors that make really dumb, stupid decisions that everybody else to deal with downstream. Uh, but as far as the taking criticism part, oh, that's easily the wrestling business is one of the worst. Uh, Edward One Call, is it fair that part-time wrestlers in WWE don't get tested? I guess. It's a convenient excuse to not test Lesnar, that's for sure. Mason Clark, Rank these from least to absolute worst, and I uh, cut out the entire rest of the question. If I remember correctly, you were asking me about so-and-so's booking. I will find it on Twitter, and I will answer it there. I'm so sorry, Mason. I just realized I cut out the second part of the question. Like, I got to the part of the nut. You're like, yes, he called my name. He's the last of my question. And then he didn't. Because I'm a jerk hole. That's why. Mounties Corner, speaking of jerk holes, if Double J was your dad, what would you get him for Father's Day? A non-stop supply of freaking laxatives. You know what I would get him as well? You. You can have him. Pro Wrestling Talk. Would you buy Double J merch? No, but what you assholes should be doing is buying the assumed Jeff Jarrett position shirt from the Oterra Central Store Pro Wrestling Tees. And yes, that's still a goddamn thing. Mike Rock Reviews, or Mike Rock Movie Reviews. Helps if I get your name right, huh? Sorry. Who's worse, Double J or the suspect sissy? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler, and even he can't measure up to the pure fucktitude of the Memphis mid-card piece of crap. It always has been. It always will be. Who's worse? Fucking Jeff Jarrett. Voice of logic. Can hardcore wrestling fans be hypocrites when it comes to wrestlers who worked in the indies and certain ones who didn't? Probably because we're talking about wrestling fans. So by nature, there's a lot of hypocrisy all across the board. As far as specifically what the hell you're talking about, I'll be honest. Voice of logic, I do not know. You will need to specify on Twitter. And then I can answer it there. Frederick Lowhouse, how would you book a John Cena retirement? Shit, I'd do that thing next year, and he's similar to Shawn Michaels in 2010. Even though you don't have the streak anymore, but Cena's like, if I can't beat you, I don't have a career. You caught me by surprise last year. That's not going to happen again this go-round. And that seems like the match we'll get at WrestleMania next year anyways, doesn't it? John Cena versus The Undertaker in a retirement match? Um, I don't know. You have to do a whole lot to book it. Because you can always bring Cena back if you need to. MVA 4D, Stone Cold or The Rock? Me personally, The Rock's on the back wall. Austin isn't. Uh, the Rock's not perfect, but he tends not to beat women. Pro Wrestling Fan 1990, if WWE goes Lashley Lesnar at SummerSlam, what happens for Roman Reigns? Probably wins the strap from one of them later on down the road, maybe at Survivor Series. I think it's just a temporary delay if that's where they go. I don't think it means anything long term, so don't read too much into it. I really don't. And then the Ryan Steele asks, from an un unbiased standpoint, has Trump done any good for the country so far? Um, It's really hard to do that without bias because here's why. You will have those that will crap on him for every single thing that he does, no matter what it is. So I can't really speak to them. And then on the flip side, you'll have those that will take numbers and manipulate them and uh, misconstrue things and 
leave certain facts and key important details and proper context out in order to just blindly support them no matter what. Um, has he done any good for the country? I mean, what has he really done? Like the tax policy went through and, and the thing is, from like a sheer numbers standpoint right now, it doesn't look like it was a bad thing, but the reality is entirely different. You know what I'm saying? Like the economy, when you're measuring it sheerly from an unemployment standpoint, wasn't in that bad of a place to, to begin with. Then sitting there and doing what you ultimately did, which was doing a massive tax cut for big corporations, so that way they could do exactly what the fuck I told you they would do, which be buyback stock from the open market, which decreases the number of shares available, which increases the stock price, means that they can pay out better dividends to their investors, the shareholders, and then ultimately, long term, either A, hoard that cash and continue to not invest it in their employees, or B, they will sit there and invest in digital infrastructure, which will decrease the need for employment in the future. And it was just a really reckless and dumb thing to do. It just was and we'll see that play out over time like even when you hear like all these different companies xyz they did this and this, that well a lot of these companies had decided to do that beforehand some of them are doing that because they're trying to appease people by saying hey do, 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 do. but long term these corporations you cannot legislate greed unless you actually legislate greed and it comes down to the whole example that I use of if you give a kid an allowance of $10 a week to do X number of chores, take out the trash, maybe mow the yard every other week, um, keep the room clean, help with the dishes, and then all of a sudden you give them 30 bucks a week, but you give them absolutely no additional requirements, expectations, or demands in order to justify receiving that additional allowance, what's that kid going to do? probably pay somebody else eight bucks a fucking week to do the shit that they were supposed to do and pocket the other 22. So they're doing nothing and they've made double the money they were before or they can do something and they keep the whole 30 for themselves. Like who would do that and think that makes sense? No parent in their right mind would. That's dumb. That's kind of similar. If, if any good has happened for the country, it has exposed the divide that people tried to pretend wasn't there because Obama was elected. And maybe if anything else, it is one of those come to Jesus moments uh, for the citizens in this country, for the country as a whole, uh, to really reevaluate everything and anything and what is truly important and what should matter and the importance of being involved. And that's not just speaking to liberals about the importance of being involved, but conservatives, people in the middle as well. Um, be involved. Be the change that you seek. Help facilitate the real change that you need, want, and desire. If, if President Trump has been good for anything, it has been that. It has been exposing the real divide that is still there and how deep some of those wounds are and how far we truly, truly have to go as a country to really be a fair place for all. So that is it for this Q&A. Thanks again to all of you that submitted your questions. We'll do another Q&A like next week. I am the Schlag Daddy. Remember, this is OTR Essential. This is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. See you later.